with Mike here on talking about some, discussing some things. We were, we were talking a lot in between the break here, but we kind of touched on a little bit about um, uh, bullies and uh, being picked on and uh, things like that. And uh, go ahead and continue where you were talking yeah, about. Yeah, when you are talking about the bully, now the bullies, they're not aware. They're, they're focused on you. Their total focus is your body language. That's all they're doing is reading your body language. That's the only thing. They won't even get close to you until the body language says, until your body language says, come closer to me. And that, that's what they're looking for. They're, they're waiting for you. Um, uh, if you make solid eye contact, it's a challenge. You're challenging them. So, but, but if you just kind of, you know, just kind of look around, you know, don't, don't continuous. Well, then, you know, they're, you know, they're not sure what's going on and they're going to wait. But when you start looking, it could be a challenge. You're challenging them. You're not going to put up with their stuff. That's one thing. And, and another thing is when you're, you're challenging them like that, then they're thinking, well, you know, maybe, you know, I can, I can, that, because they feel, okay, what it is, a bully thinks like an Indian chief got that big headdress thing with all the feathers. Right. Okay, if I can bully you, I'm going to get another feather in my hat. Uh, That's what he's thinking. So he wants to find as many people he can bully. That's just the way he is. That makes him stronger. Okay. okay. You see what I'm saying? Now, it should be, in, in my world, you get the feathers by doing good things. You know, I count, I'm going, oh, I feel like I'm good. Every time I do something good, oh, you remember when you were a kid, they put the little star yes, on him? Yes. Okay, well, when I do good things, I get another feather. <laughs> you know I mean? So I feel good because I'm doing good for others. Okay, for some reason, their mentality is they have to take the feather away from people. So that's what they're looking for is people that they can intimidate and they can bully around. And that, but it's a, the cool thing is they're looking for your weaknesses okay. and how you act and uh, okay like like we we're saying when you step back or you know just when you come back a little bit as they approach you and you come back you're warning them you're not comfortable now is it you're not comfortable because I'm scared of you you know what I mean so they're going to read it and that's why bullies at first when they're in school they're learning how to be a bully. That's where they're learning how to do it. I see. And it, it's just part of it. Now, they can... Uh, now, I'm not a psychiatrist or whatever, so right. I don't know how you correct these people because uh, I stopped it with my kids when they were little. I wanted them to do good. I see. You know what I mean? So I kept their focus on trying to do good, whether it's do good in school, or do good to others, help others, and stuff like that. So that's how nice. they're getting the feathers in their hat, by the way, that's what I taught them. So I don't know if somebody, if these bad bullies can be taught different. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not saying that, but what I am right. saying is they're looking to take something and that it is a feather for them. For you, you're giving your um, respect in yourself. That's why, as a parent, you tell your kid, you know, if somebody mess with you, get after them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, the worst thing you tell a kid is, well, when they're going to, be, well, it's like, well, this is what they do in Guatemala. Somebody hits you, well, go, go, go tell somebody, and, and they'll, um, you know, I mean, what, what, what's the story on that? In, in where I'm from, Central America, it's illegal to hurt somebody. So the people don't fight back. So when they get mugged, they just get mugged. <laughs> you know what I mean? They don't have the capacity. Yeah, or... they can't understand how force is used. You know, they got good force and bad force, just like everything, good and bad. But they don't understand that. They just look at force as being bad. So if you if down there, if you hurt somebody, you go to jail. That's it. <laughs> That's as simple as it is. Okay. But that doesn't stop the bullies. You know, right. because. Uh, they're not concerned. They're, they're not concerned about the law because they're not breaking the law as a bully. Uh, okay. Oh, I see. Because all they're doing is intimidating you. You know, they're they're trying their best to control you, 
and they're learning, okay, I can control you, and then they go over to this other person, and then bam, they get whipped up on, you know. Well, now they learn, well, you can't control everybody. <laughs> so now they start learning, well, who can I control and who can I not? So, and they're starting to learn what this stepping back means or what you were talking about, where you hold your hands, sure. you know, and all this stuff. They're re learning to read body language. That's really what it is. They don't know it, but they're, you know, but that's what they're, they're evaluating. And these same bullies, if they continue on and they get good at it, they use the same tactics when they do criminal activity. Okay, I see you, I want to rob you. Well, you know, before I rob you, I want to kind of come up to you. Now, you come, come up like this, uh, you know. Well, my body language is just telling you. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? See, they're learning body language. So then, now, if I'm walking up to you and you don't have any kind of way to defend yourself, well, then I'm going to, I got my gun I, or I got my knife or whatever. Give me your money. Right. See, that's the first step. That's the first step. Or lunch money. <laughs> you know, yeah, little kids, you know. Right. And that, but it just goes up a little more, a little more. And the next thing you know, it worked good like that. Well, then they'll go into a liquor store, a convenience store. It's the same thing. First, they come out there like that. And then after they do it for a few times, then they come out there and they go, I got a gun. Give me your money. Yeah. You know I mean, they, if they, they walk in there, and they, they can, they, they're, they're already looking at you. And they can see that you're, you're a little, you know, you're, you're not going to be able to defend yourself. Because they've already stumbled upon people that can defend themselves. So now they've figured out by your body language, you're not going to put up much of a fight. Well, then they'll just go, there's my gun, give me the money. And then they give them the money. <laughs> you know what I mean? So right. that's, that's how the bullying... It just continues on, and that same tactic works when they do that. Corrupt police? Oh, oh see, it wasn't not corrupt. There's another word. Um, I can't remember, but there's another one. I, I wish I stumbled upon that word the other day, and it was great. Because when you say corrupt police, you think of Mexico police or, or something like that. But the police here. If you're driving a fancy car and all this kind of stuff, you look like you're successful. Some of these cops are kind of jealous, but that's still not quite the right word. Uh, I wish I remember that word. But anyway, the envy kind of stuff. Oh, okay. you know? gotcha. And, gotcha. and they're, they'll kind of make it a little difficult, and they're waiting. They're reading your body language. See, that's how they know that they're going to really stick it to you, you know, on how they're going to uh, sure, get sure. you. That's what I'm saying, you know. Uh, like I said in California, I mean in uh, Florida, when that cop got me, uh, he could see my body language. It was I uh, wasn't I wasn't cooperating like he would like. Uh, but the only thing he knew he could stick me with was the dog on the motorcycle. Uh, okay, see, and uh, now the, the other time in Topeka, the cop he got me for I think four or five tickets he gave. Yeah, you know, but the thing was, he didn't read body language too good, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, but then again, I, that's where I was, and I just called my wife to come get the dog. So, I mean, it wasn't that big of a deal. It was more it just kind of pissed me off because he was so stupid more than anything. Right, right. You know? right. And that's why he kept giving me all the tickets, you know, because I had that attitude. And he, well, I didn't have the attitude when it started. And he kept losing every time he tried to, you know, like I said, I pulled over and he didn't tell me to, well, he wanted me to pull over there. I went to the convenience store and pulled in. And then he got on the, on his microphone and said, you know, I didn't tell you to turn in here, you know. And then I, I got off the motorcycle and put the umbrella up so the sun wasn't shining on my dog. And because I knew whenever they stopped me, it takes a long time. So right. I did that. I didn't tell you to get off the motorcycle. <laughs> I mean, he was, I mean, you know, nothing was going his way, you know. And, you know, and then when he says, you know, uh, and then after I put the umbrella up, I stood there with my hands up. And he come walking up and he said, well, what are you doing with your hands up? And, I, and in Oklahoma, you're supposed to tell the police that you're carrying a gun and keep your hands in the open. Uh, right? right. Now, in the car, you put your hands on the, the window, you know, right. so you see your hand. Well, I'm not there. I, I could have just, just put my hands like that. But I have fun. 
I, I don't do nothing wrong. <laughs> so then I do like that. When I go through the airport, you know how they tell you to put your hands up so they can wand you? Yeah. You know, I put my hands up like that. They said, you're not under arrest. Put your hands out. Put, don't put them up. <laughs> so I always put my hands up, you know. And then people driving by, they go, ah, you know. Oh, you know because I want witnesses. I want people to see I'm not doing anything wrong. Because I don't know what's going to happen when they stop, they stop me. So I had my hands up. And he said, what's your hands up for? And I said, I'm carrying a gun. And he said, oh, well, we can't have that. You know, here, here. Um, you know, for our protection, you know, put your hands behind your back and I'm going to put some handcuffs on you, you know, for our protection. You know, like I couldn't figure out what, yeah. how I'm being protected, but, you know, that's, that's what we did. So when, and that's why I carried my gun, is right in my lower back. Right. So then he put the handcuffs on, then he says, well, you know, where's your gun? I just picked my shirt up and there was my gun, you know. So, I mean, he looked bad. <laughs> Everything he did, it looked bad. And then he says, well, you know, the dog doesn't have a license. You know, and I said, well, you know, I was doing the driving. That's <laughs> funny, you know, and I thought it was funny. It is well, funny. You know, he didn't think it was funny, you know, so. <laughs> you know, so yeah, and then with, the, with my tag from Central America, and it was an 04 tag, and this was in 08 or 09, uh -huh. and see, see, and he never leaves the, the state of Kansas, he thought the whole world runs just like the state of Kansas. Right. And I told them, you know, well, that license tag, they use this right now. If you go down and buy something, they're going to give you an 04 tag. You know, I mean, they made, I don't know how many of them. And when they're gone, they're gone. then they'll get and whatever the new gear is. So, and you don't get a new tag every year or nothing.